Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture Introduction to Lists and Sets in Python. In this video, I will tell you about lists and sets and some of their popular methods in the language Python. Okay, so before starting talking about the concepts of lists and sets, let's talk about debugging. So debugging is not a process, it's not a concept, sorry, but it's a process. It's a process of solving problems in your code. And since like about few 50, 60 years ago, someone's, uh, a bug got stuck on someone's piece of code written on a paper. And when he or she removed that bug, his or her code started running. And since then, the name debugging got stuck. Okay, so coming to the concept of lists. A list is a collection data type. And it has three major highlights. The first is that it is unordered. The second is that it's mutable or it's changeable. It's not like a data type which is fixed. Once you create it, you can't change it. It's not like that. You can change it at any point of time. And third, duplicate members are allowed in the list. So you can have multiple items, each of which have the same value. You can create a list by writing the name of the list equal to open and close square brackets. Okay, now we come to some popular methods which are associated with the, associated with the list data type in Python. Okay, the first is to create a new list. Like I told you before, you can simply create a list by writing the name of the list equal to open and close square brackets. And inside that square book, inside those square brackets, you can write the various items that you want inside the list. So here I've added four items, my name, my age, my favorite color, and my height. So you can have items of various different data types inside a single list. This is also a very positive point of lists. And since a list is indexed, you can access elements by specifying their index number. So if you specify the index number two, and remember in Python index starts from the number zero. So the number list index number two is actually the third element, which is the color red. Okay, and you can access specific elements from negative indexing also. So if you don't append a negative sign before a number, that means you are, you are, you want to access that element starting from the head of the list. But if you access, if you append a negative sign, so that means you want to access the element from the tail of the list. So test list square bracket two means the third element from the front, while test list, list square bracket minus one means the first element from the rear of the list, which is 180.5. Okay, and you don't have to only retrieve a specific element. You can retrieve multiple elements if you specify the range of indices. So in this example here, test list square bracket one colon three. I will retrieve the elements which have the index number one and two. So keep in mind, that the index number which you specify after the colon won't be included and instead the items from the index number before the colon will be included. Okay, and like I told you before, a list is mutable. That means you can change it. But how exactly can you change it? Well, it is very simple. You simply write the name of the list, square brackets, and then the ele element numbers index, index which you want to change. So here, if I want to change the number 23 to 42 in the list, I can simply write, write test list square bracket one equal to then the new value, which is 42. Okay. And now if I want to check if an element, if an item exists in a list or not, I can simply use a normal if condition. If then the element I want to check in list, test list, test list here is the name of the list. Then you can simply write your if clause after the if statement in this way. You can check for multiple duplicates and for very many different applications. This is a very useful, useful application of lists. Okay, and now how do you loop through a list? Well, like I told you before, you loop through items using the for loop. So you can simply write the for keyword space and then you have to declare a name of a variable, which should be an item in the list. It is good practice to use the variable i because i stands for the stands for iterator in and then the name of the list 
you want to iterate through. So here, if I want to iterate to the list test list, so I can simply write for i in test list comma colon sorry. Then I can simply after doing an indentation, I can simply write a write a block of code. Now, if I want to check the length of a list, I can simply do print length len parenthesis name of the list. Len is the function which will let you check the length of the list. How do you append items to the end of the list? Well, that is very simple. That is done with the help of the append method. So you can write the name of the list dot append, and in the parenthesis you can write whatever element you want to insert. So here I am just inserting this COVID-19 into my test list. Okay, now we talked about adding items to the list, but if an list is mutable, then surely we should be able to remove items. And yes, you are right. You can remove items from the list. So if I want to remove item, let's say I want to remove the color red from my list, I can simply write the name of the list dot remove and then the item I want to remove. And if I print my list after this, this item will be removed. Or I can remove an item in the other way. I can write the name of the list dot pop parenthesis. But if you use this method, you have no control over which element will be removed. The last element in the list will be removed. You have no control over it. And finally, you can also use a del keyword. You can write del space the name of the list and the index you want to remove. This del method and the dot remove method are what I would recommend you to use because these are definite methods. You have control over which element should be removed. Okay, and copying a list. Well, copying a list is not as simple as writing the name of the new list equal to the old list, because that will create a reference of the old list and might lead to problems later on in your code. Instead, what you do is you write the name of the new list equal to the name of the old list dot copy parenthesis. You have to remember to use this dot copy method, otherwise it might cause problems later on in your code. Or copying a list can also be done in a different way, which is to use the list method. If you write the name of the new list you want to create equal to list, and then in parenthesis you can pass the old list. Sometimes you might also want to clear a list, which means clearing a list here means emptying the list of all its items. So you can do that with the name of the list. You can do that by writing the name of the list dot and then clear. And then finally parenthesis. If you do this, all the items from your list will be emptied. This might help you save memory later on. So yeah, you should keep it in mind. Finally, joining two lists. There might be many, very many different occasions where you'll have to join two lists. So you can write the new list, you can create a new list, and in order to join, you can simply use the plus operand. So you can write the name of the new combined list equal to the name of the old list plus the name of the new list you want to join. Or you can also use the extend method. So you write the name of the old list dot extend and in parenthesis you can write the name of the list you want to add. But keep it in keep this in mind that the list you specify inside the parenthesis will be added to the end of the list which added to the end of the first list. Okay. Okay. So now let's talk about the concept of sets. Sets are also a collection data type in Python. And they are different from lists. They are different in the sense that these are also unordered and unindexed, but they cannot contain duplicate values. A set in Python is very much like a set in mathematics. And it has many of the same methods also. You can create a set with writing by writing the name of the set you want to create equal to and then open and close curly brace. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the popular methods which are associated with the sets in Python. Sorry, this is wrong. So like I told you before, you can simply create a set by writing the name of the set equal to 
open and close curly brace and inside you can write the items you want to include in the set so here i have written the names of four programming languages to include in the set python c++ java and r how do you access values in a set well since a set is unordered so you can't access an element directly by using their index number what you have to do is that you have to loop through the set so here you have it i have simply written for i in test set print i so i am using the for loop to iterate through the set you should use a for loop only because for loop is generally recommended for iterating through objects or collections okay and now how do you check for the existence of specific items in the set so like in a list you can simply use if then the item you want to check in the name of the set colon after indentation you can write whatever code code block you want to write okay and adding a single item to the set keep this in mind that adding a single item is done in a slightly different way and if you want to add multiple items you'll have to use a different method so if you want to want to add only a single item so you have to do you have to write the name of the set you want to add it to dot add parenthesis the item you want to add so here i am adding the programming language kotlin to the set okay and how do you add multiple items well you simply write the name of the set again dot update not add update and in the parenthesis you have to pass a list now this list i have i just added two items pearl and c but you can write as many items as you want okay and then is the method which will tell you the number of items you have in your set so print len test set will just output the number of items i have in my set test set okay and removing an item from set well since a set is also mutable you should be able to remove and yes you are you just write the name of the set dot remove and inside the parenthesis you write the element you want to remove so here since i want to remove the item c i am writing test set dot remove double quotes c or you can also remove it in a slightly different way you can write the name of the set again dot now instead of remove you write discard and similarly in the parenthesis you can write the item you want to discard okay and we have a third method also which is the dot pop but again this element this method also i won't recommend you to use because this will remove the last element from the set and since you don't have any control over which element is last it will remove a seemingly random element every time and dot pop method will also return the element which it removes so you can print the same to check so okay, can sometimes you might want to clear a set of all its items so you can simply write the name of the set dot clear parenthesis so after doing this this element this test set sorry will be emptied and it will contain no items this will also help you in conserving memory later on okay and clearing a set versus deleting a set it's different because if you clear a set the variable will still remain in your memory but if you delete the test set test set will be gone from your memory and it will give you an error when you try to print it okay so how do you join two sets well joining joining is done by the dot union method so if you can write simply the name of the first set dot union and in parenthesis you write the name of the second set you want to join so if i want to join test set with test set 2 i are simply write test set dot union test set 2 and lastly we have the most famous method of intersection this method will help you in many applications because it will tell you the common elements between two sets or two collections so here i have two sets temp1 and temp2 in temp10 temp1 sorry i have the letters a through e and in temp2 i have z d i c and n letters so if you want to find the common letters common items which if you see by visual inspection it's d and c you can simply write print temp1 dot intersection temp2 
this name of the first set dot intersection and in parenthesis the name of the second set and also this might seem very obvious but temp1 and temp2 are interchangeable here the result would be the same okay thank you that's all i had for you in this lecture i'll see you in the next one where we'll talk about dictionaries okay bye